Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, by now we understood the difference between polygenic inheritance and monogenic inheritance. Now, polygenic inheritance does not follow the Mendelian ratio and that is why uh, polygenic inheritance doesn't really follow the Mendelian pattern of inheritance. So, let us quickly distinguish or very clearly see the difference between the Mendelian ratio and the ratio in polygenic inheritance. So let us first consider the Men Mendelian inheritance with two gene pairs. So in both the cases, we will take an example where two gene pairs are involved. So for Mendelian inheritance with two gene pairs, let us take the examples of the cross which Mendel had performed in the second part of his experiment where he took round and yellow seeds. That is he crossed capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y, that is round yellow seeds with green wrinkled seeds. So these were the parents. So what did he get in the F1 generation? So in the F1 generation, he obtained capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. And what was their phenotype? So in this case, the phenotype was all of them were round and yellow. So there were no intermediates formed because as per Mendelian inheritance, what used to happen was only the dominant alleles used to decide the phenotype. So the dominant allele was capital R and capital Y. So therefore, all of them were round and yellow. That was the F1 generation. Okay. Now what happened in the F2 generation? So in the F2 generation, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y was self-bred. So when they were self-bred, these were the various possibilities. Right. So these are the possible gametes and when they were crossed, these were the possibilities. So if you look at the possibilities in the F2 generation, what do you see? So in the F2 generation also, there are no intermediates that were found. So you either found round yellow seeds or you found green wrinkled seeds or green round seeds or yellow wrinkled seeds. So these were the four possibilities that you found. So that means the number of phenotypes that you could obtain were only these four. Round yellow, round wrinkled, green, round, green wrinkled. So these were the four possibilities. So no new intermediates were formed. So whatever characteristics were there in the parental phenotypes, so the same phenotypes exist even in the F2 generation output. And what was the phenotypic ratio? So if you find out the ratio, the ratio was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So I'm not getting into the detail of finding the ratio because I hope all of you know. So okay, let me tell one as an example. So round yellow, how many round yellow exists here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So 9 out of 16. Similarly, uh, yellow wrinkled would be 3 out of 16. Green round would be 3 out of 16 and wrinkled green would be 1 out of 16. So, and how we have decided which one will be round and which one will be wrinkled that you know as per Mendelian pattern. So wherever you have the presence of the dominant allele that will have the dominant phenotype. So wherever you have a capital R that means it will be round. Wherever you have a capital Y that means it will be yellow. So that is how it was decided. So this was the number of phenotypes and the phenotypic ratio. Now let us compare a polygenic inheritance with two polygene pairs and see how the phenotypic ratio differs. So one good example that we can take is the wheat kernel. So where we take the pure red wheat kernel and pure white wheat kernel and cross them. So these are the parents. So what do we get in the F1 generation? So in the F1 generation, so this, this is capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B and this is small a, small a, small b, small b. So what do we get in the F1 generation? We get capital A, small b, a, capital B, small b. But this is not pure red in color. Rather, this is intermediate in color. Or we can say this is medium red in color, not pure red. 
So this is medium in color. Now what do we do in the F2 generation? So for F2 generation, we self bred the F1 generation. So what would happen in F2? So these are the possible gametes and these, this is the possible output. So when you look at this, so what do you see? So how many pure red do you have? So you have one pure red out of 16. How many dark red do you have? So we assume that this pure red is like the darkest and then you have a shade called dark red. So dark red is one, two, three, four. So you have four dark reds. How many medium red do you have? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. And how many light red do you have? You have one, two, three, four. And how many whites do you have? You just have one. So basically, how many number of phenotypes do you have? You have one, two, three, four, five. So the number of phenotypes involved in this case is five. So you have five phenotypes here. And how, what is the ratio? The ratio is one is to four is to six is to four is to one. So if you look at the phenotypic ratio of the F2 generation in case of polygenic inheritance, this is not the same as the phenotypic ratio in case of Mendelian inheritance. And that is why we say that the polygenic inheritance, they do not follow the Mendelian pattern of inheritance and that is why they are different. So from this, we understand that the basic place where the polygenic and the monogenic inheritance are different is that in case of polygenic inheritance all the alleles they contribute all the dominant alleles they contribute so therefore like for example in this case all the dominant alleles like capital A capital B both of them are called contributing alleles because they contribute to the final trait right so wherever you have capital A capital B both they both contribute to the trait whereas the small a small b they are called non-contributing allele because they do not add to it for example in this case only if you talk about the capital and the small a b's so capital a capital b means they add red color small a small b means they do not add red color so capital letters that is the dominant alleles are basically called contributing alleles and the recessive alleles in this case are called non-contributing alleles. Like how we talk about dominant alleles and recessive alleles in case of Mendelian inheritance. Similarly, we talk about contributing alleles and non-contributing alleles in case of polygenic inheritance. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.